What's up, Cotton fans? Welcome back to the playoff picture. Today, looking at the number two overall seed in the Dallas Empire. Three-time home series winners at Los Angeles, Chicago, and then at London in week number 12. Could not quite get the job done, though, this last weekend at Toronto. Definitely brought a lot of question marks to the forefront, especially considering that they lost to Atlanta, lost to Toronto. But here's the thing about this Dallas Empire squad. I think a lot of people were excited to see how this team would do just from the get-go. You've got two experienced players in Krim and Clayster that both have experience playing with one another beyond just their overall Call of Duty experience. And then this was the only team to truly invest into young guns at the beginning of the season. A very big trial for players like Illy, for like Shotzi, that would get their first go at the professional scene of Call of Duty, but of course have had a lot of buzz around them in the past couple of years. Beyond that, you can't forget about Hugh the Nuke. He's been literally called a glitch on the map for a reason. We saw that in Black Ops 4, maybe didn't have the greatest of teams until it was too late into the season, but to start off on a very strong and very anticipated roster in Dallas, a lot of eyes were on them. And Dallas, unfortunately, came into a bit of fatigue as they had to play up against both Chicago and Atlanta in the Minnesota launch weekend, in which they lost both matchups. Past that, though, they would also meet up against Chicago a couple more times early in the season while they were on the way to eventually winning those three home series events. The only hiccup would come at the end of the year when they played up against Atlanta a couple different times and could not quite get past them. Specifically, you take a look at what this team has been able to do in the regular season. This is the fifth overall hardpoint squad, statistically mostly by win percentage, but they actually hold a positive differential that's one of the top in the league at the moment at plus nearly 13 points a map. That's not bad at all. Beyond that, they're also the second place team statistically in search and destroy and the best overall team when it comes to domination. And that's great news, especially the domination statistic. If you can continue to win map three, think about the overall favor that's going to bring these guys when it gets to the playoffs. Now, remember, they do have a couple rounds that will be treated as a buy before they play. But the good news is they don't have Atlanta or Chicago on their side of the bracket. And the reason why I said that's good news, well, they're one in five versus Atlanta, one in three versus Chicago. Against Atlanta, they're 1-5 in, in the domination in those matchups, which is not necessarily all that great, and only 2-6 in, in the Surge and Destroy. Versus Chicago, pretty 50-50 all the way through the modes, with the exception of the hard point in which they're 1-5. So for Dallas, you figure, hey, we win our hard point, we win our search, and if we can keep winning the domination, we're in a pretty darn good spot, and I 100% agree. To get more on this, though, I had a chance to sit down and talk with the GOAT himself, Clayster, to see how things were going this season, and what things to look out for when the Dallas Empire hit the playoffs in winners round three. Joining me now is Clayster from the Dallas Empire. I'm sure if you've been following along with the Call of Duty scene, this is a face that you'll absolutely recognize. If not the face, definitely the energy. That's one of the things that I think has mostly stapled you. Uh, how are you doing? Da th thanks for joining me, man. Yeah, I'm doing pretty well, man. How, you how about you? Doing, doing really well. Doing really well. Uh, I want to get your take uh, just kind of over a couple of things uh, of the Empire. At the beginning of the year, I think a lot of people were most excited to see what you guys in Dallas had to offer. Not only because you've got yourself and Crim6, obviously two extremely veteran players, but also the huge potential you've seen out of Huke. And then the first full competitive look at players like Illy and Shotzi. Uh, can you kind of explain like what the dynamic was like at the beginning of the year? Were you and Crim kind of taking up like the dad role, for lack of a better term? Or how did that growth kind of uh, start off? off the season for you guys i think at the beginning of the season it was just a lot of finding ourselves um i've been a part of so many different teams and uh so many different types of players you know young old experience inexperienced um it's all about finding what works for this specific team on this specific game so um you know in, in a lot of other esports and a lot of other sports the veteran players have been playing that exact game for you know 10 years 15 years and so they have a lot of at to add in that regards uh but since we're all learning a new game with each other every year. Um, it was interesting to see how quickly um, the younger guys were picking up on things and just kind of like not making mistakes um, after we had like fixed them. And, and that was really the big thing for us is like, we do, uh, me and Krim were like, we don't, we guys don't mind. We actually expect you to be making a bunch of mistakes for at least mm -hmm. the first few months. Um, but what we do want to see out of you is that once we actually fix those mistakes, go over them, explain why it's wrong and, and don't do it again. We just hope you don't do it again. And like, that's the goal we're trying to get at. It's like, we'll, we'll talk about it. We'll figure it out, figure out a solution. And the main thing is just don't ever make the same mistake twice. And sure. so, um, you know, finding that footing at the beginning of the year was pretty tough for us. Um, we had a really strong S and D team, just like with the players that we have, we're all really good individual S and D players. So that was super solid from the start. 
but our respawn was kind of shaky and it wasn't bad it like that was the thing about our team like, it's never been bad uh but it's been like always tight like, but we could just never close out games. Like we'd always get 200 points in hard point, but we just like kept losing hard points or we'd yeah, get within yeah. 10 points in Dom and keep losing. So um, it was really just about putting all that together, figuring out how to clutch up in those situations, how to be comfortable in those situations. And honestly, I think being uncomfortable in those clutch situations at the beginning has helped us a lot throughout the rest of the year. And that's really a good segue because the second question I had for you was kind of considering Rambo Ray joining you guys right around the halfway point of the year. Was that kind of, you know, an extra bit of mentorship to help you guys tune things up specifically in Respawn when you were kind of going through some of the tribulations versus teams like Atlanta and Chicago where you had a couple of flexes where you missed out on some domination wins, you missed out on a couple of hard point wins? Um, yeah, I, th I believe that bringing Ray into the team was really necessary for, for our team's success as a whole. Um, like, he... He's not doing anything crazy. Like he's not do, like pouring over VODs or, or you know, like, well, I mean, he is, but he's not doing just like extra stuff. You know, he's just doing his job and he's doing it well. And, and it means that like, when you look at our team dynamic, me and Krim can't see everything on the map all the time. And some of the younger guys might be, well, at the first might've been a little shy to speak up because they're like, I don't really want to criticize or call oh, out sure, a play yeah. because maybe they're not sure if it's a bad play or not. So they don't want to like say anything about it. So we can't be on the whole map all the time and, and seeing each individual play, but having that six person being the coach watching all the time, just watching everybody. I mean, it helps so much, man. Like it, it, it helps so much to be able to just identify little things or, or even not even problems but like things we did well or things where we kind of do something different every time and we want to figure it out and figure out exactly what we want to do every time so that's really what what ray is for is just mm. getting us all on the same page good things bad things things in the middle that we need to figure out which way we want to go with it and he's done a really good job this year and i know with that obviously with the year being exclusively online it brings a totally different look to the call of duty league as a, as a whole and for someone like you who again if you've ever watched a call of duty live event you've seen clayster pop off and get loud and get excited and that energy is something that i'm sure is a little bit more difficult to bring to the table now that you're doing it through a team speak or a discord call or things like that uh, what kind of difference has this exclusively online approach kind of brought to maybe not just your play style, but the, the team dynamic as whole. Like, do you feel like it's a little bit more difficult to bring that energy when you're just kind of playing an online quote unquote tournament? A hundred percent. It's, it's way harder. Um, there's no, uh, no crowd to feed off. No, like, uh, like opponents sitting across the stage to feed off of. Um, I've actually toned it down a lot on the online stuff just because using, uh, you know, voice programs through the internet, if somebody's yelling really loudly, it like overpowers everybody sure. else so you can't hear them. Whereas on land, we're all on the same levels and no matter how loud somebody's talking, they're never gonna overpower the rest of the people. And so I've had to tone it super far down um, online, especially during the map. I mean, afterwards, yeah, sure, I'll get a little excited. Um, I try to at least uh, like emulate how it would feel. Like I think after we won the Paris one, I was like banging my chair, London one. <laughs> I was like banging my chest and stuff. Um, and, and it's like you try and make it feel and you try and simulate and make it feel like it was like a major win and like it, that would have been on land and and all that stuff but um yeah during the map i pretty much like cut it out completely um I, people be, need to be able to hear in, in the matches and, and in call of duty especially this call of duty like everybody needs to be talking and everybody needs to hear what everybody has to say and so like one person just getting hyped for an extended period of time just ends up messing up all those comms do you think it's changed you a lot as a player? I mean, we saw a couple of weeks ago, you just taking a couple of really deep, like premeditated breaths, trying to like calm and center yourself down. Do you feel like it's kind of tapped into a different level of player than you've ever been before, considering, you know, the circumstances? Um, I've, I don't think it, it's something that I've never done before. I've always been a big, big fan of, um, like controlled breathing and like slowing down your heart rate and stuff like that. And, um, I very rarely use it. I mean, there, there's actually a GIF uh, on Twitter of me doing it at Champs last year. And it, it's mainly just to, to clear my mind and make sure I'm in control of my breathing because that's like the number one thing that I think a lot of uh, esports players in general forget about, but especially COD players because we're communicating so much, mm, sure. is that like you really have to control your breathing. It's like the first step in playing well is making sure you're getting enough air and, and exhaling enough that like it's in rhythm. And if you're calling out all the time and just like going hard for 10 minutes, you'll be out of breath by the end of it. And you might not feel like it, but you actually are. And, and it affects like your reaction time and all that stuff. So 
um i wouldn't say I, I, i'm a brand like it's changed a new part of me um but i think with age and growing older and and getting towards the end of my career and and also playing with the players i'm playing with um has changed me as a person more than anything else mm. That's an interesting tidbit. So let's take a look. Playoffs, kind of final question here for you guys. You secure the second place finish, uh, but along the way, throughout the regular season, you guys have had a little bit of a difficult time finding and securing wins versus teams like Atlanta and Chicago. One in five versus Atlanta, not necessarily being able to close a couple of really close dominations. And then the opposite was true versus Chicago, where the hard point was kind of a tribulation for you guys. So when you look at those teams that you would have to face if you get to the winner's finals, is there anything in particular that you're trying to add into the rehearsal technique to try to over come those squads to get to a uh, world championship this time around i think that exact line of reasoning uh is why we lose to them i think mm -hmm. we we shouldn't be doing anything different i think that when we play specifically those two teams um something yeah. about playing those teams where it kind of just like it, it feels uncomfortable and that's one thing you never want to feel in COD is uncomfortable. And the reason it feels that way is because we're scared to make plays and we're scared to make mistakes and because we know they'll punish us. And so having that hesitation versus teams like that is how you lose. Mm -hmm. And you let the moment get to you, you let the team get to you, yada, yada. And it's something we've talked about as a team like a lot. Um, and it's really just play, play those teams the exact same way we play everybody else, like with no respect, like with no regard for who they are as players, just like play that team, knowing that we're better than them or we're going to beat them. And nine times out of 10, you're going to beat them. And that's just been the big thing for us is like, you know, we beat them both before uh, on the way to a tournament win. And every time we've played them, uh, since then, like uh, we haven't played Chicago again, but we, we played, uh, you know, Atlanta quite a few times. And it, it's so tight. Like, if you go and look at those series, like, they are so very close. Like, they're on a razor's edge the whole time. And, you know, like, maybe there's a map we get blown out, but, like, the S&Ds are close, the DOMs are close, like, one of the hard points is close or something. And I think that's just the main thing I keep telling my team is, like, dude, we are so close to beating these guys. Like, if we just stop being scared of them and just, like, play our game and just, like, run them over, like, we're going to smoke them. Just, like, forget who we're playing. Like, just go and go hard. And... I'm super confident playing either one of those teams going into champs. I think uh, the, how good we are as a team right now is the best we've ever been all year, and, and it's the best time to be that going into champs. Absolutely the case. Well, best of luck in the next week and a half or so of kind of leading up to playoffs, and of course, we can't wait to see you guys when we get a chance to in winners round three. Clay, thanks so much for taking the time, man. I really appreciate it. Yeah, no problem, man. Thanks for having me on. You got it. I, honestly, uh, I was blown away just having a chance to sit and talk with Clayster. Specifically, again, I think a lot about the formation of this roster, uh, which is a conversation point that has obviously deviated since the beginning of the year, but one that I think is very important. We've seen a lot of teams pick up these young guns in the middle of the season. Dallas takes the gamble at the start of the season, and obviously it's absolutely paid off for them. So looking forward to the playoff again, my only big concern is when they play up against teams like Atlanta and Chicago, but we would be kidding ourselves if we think that this team was not going to have a good chance to make make a winner's finals, if not the grand finals from the winner's bracket. This is a top three team without question. And personally, I've got them getting to that grand finals with a very solid chance at winning it all. So hopefully you guys enjoy this again. Thanks to Clayster for jumping on with the interview for me. If you have missed any of our other playoff picture series covering some of the other CDL teams, make sure you check out the playlist that's attached to this video. Otherwise, make sure you subscribe and ring the notification bell on your way out to know when more of these videos do pop up as they get uploaded. Till the next one, though, hope you guys keep holding it down. Later, later. Bye-bye.